from Adam to Abraham. Hajj is more than a journey that is a ritual. Hajj is the way of living. This book is written by Safir Rob. Chapter 9, Sayyid. Behold, Safa and Marwa are among the symbols of Allah. So if those who visit the house in the season of other times should compass them round, it is no sin in them. And if anyone obeys his impulse to good, be sure the law is he who recognizes and knows. The Sa'i means running. In Islamic terminology, it signifies the act when the pilgrim runs between the two mountains, Safa and Mawa. Allah Salawat Ta'ala tells us that these two mountains are among his symbols. These two mountains were the scene of Hagar's quest when she ran back and forth in search of water for baby Ismail. They have become monuments of patience under the hardest trials and are connected to the teachings of patience that the Tawaf of Safa and Marwa speak of in the previous ayah. The word used in the Quran is not Sa'i, but a derivative of Tawaf, Jatawafa. Like Tawaf around the Kaaba, Sa'i is an essential rite of both Hajj and Umrah. Al-Zahari reported from Irwa that he said, I asked Aisha about it and recited to her the verse, Behold, Safa and Mawa are among the symbols of Allah. Then I said to her, By Allah, I see that in light of this verse, there is no sin on a person who does not perform Sa'i between them. Aisha said to me, Oh, my nephew, that is the worst interpretation you have put on this verse. It does not mean what you say. If it had meant what you say it means, then the wording should have been, should not compass them round. This verse was revealed concerning the Ansar who worshipped the idol Manet in the area called al Mashalal that referred that they feared were committing a sin by walking between Safa and Mawa because this was one of the false gods they worshipped before Islam. After they embraced Islam, they asked the Prophet about it. At this, Allah revealed this verse. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has by his practice affirmed authenticity of Sa'i between the two mountains, and no one has the authority to abandon it. The Sa'i is performed after the Tawaf of the Kaaba. It requires the pilgrim to run between seven paths, the first of which begins at Safa and ends at Mawa. The second begins at Mawa and ends at Safa. And the seven are counted by repeating back and forth. Continuity in Sa'i is not a necessary condition for its validity. If a pilgrim stops, Sa'i, between Safa and Mawa for some reason, that is, maybe it's prayer time, and he joins the congregation for prayer. When the prayer is complete, he should resume his Sa'i from his last point. It is recommended that the believers walk between the mountain and the green marker, then jog between the markers when performing the Sa'i. It is well known that the prophet entered Safa gate and while approaching Safa reversed, recited Quran 2, 158. Verily, Safa and Mawa are among the symbols of Allah. He climbed Safa until he could see the Kaaba from where he stood. He faced the Kaaba and proclaimed Allah's oneness, glorified Allah, praised him and then said, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He has no partner. To him belongs the kingdom and all praises. He alone grants life 
and causes death. He has power over all things. There is no God but he. He has fulfilled his promise, given victory to his servant, and he alone defeated the confederates. He said this three times, made it a similar supplication, then he walked towards Mawa. Climbing Mawa until he could see the Kaaba, he made a supplication as he did at Safa. It is recommended to make supplications remembering Allah while walking between Safa and Mawa. After performing Tawaf and Sa'i, the pilgrim have completed the rites of Umrah. Thus, if a believer is performing Hajj to Matu, one may terminate the state of Ihram by clipping a small lot of hair or shaving it all off. If a pilgrim is performing Hajj, Kiran, then he should maintain the state of Ihram until the day of sacrifice. When the pilgrim completes the salutation to the sacred precincts, he then must wait until the 8th of Dhul-Hijjah to embark on the rites of Hajj. While in Mecca, the pilgrim should be ever mindful of the fact that he is in the sacred precincts, especially having entered through the proper doors. Good attitude managed towards others and consideration of the fact that he is there as the guest of Allah. All should remain top of mind and the posture he takes with every scene or encounter. He will meet people from every quarter of the globe, from every nation, of every color, and of many, many different cultures and backgrounds. The pilgrim must remember these differences, knowing that what his culture perceives as rude or unethical may be totally normal, acceptable behavior in another culture. The pilgrim should abstain from judgment based on his own cultural beliefs, for Allah is the only judge. He is the only one qualified to judge the heart of those whom he invites to the Kaaba. Patience and self-restraint are in order. Every person should strive against the evil suggestions to himself. Yes, the pilgrim should understand that he is still subject to the whispers of Satan, even in the sacred precincts of Mecca. The pilgrim is still subject to the evil of created things and to selfish desires. Remember, the journey is for the purification, to answer the call that Abraham issued thousands of years ago. The pilgrim is not cleansed of his sins just because he has arrived in Mecca. In fact, he must continue to perform good deeds that he may be purified. Also of a great consideration is the fact that this is the place where every act is counted 100,000 fold. Knowing this, every pilgrim should take care to please the other guests of Allah. For if we had a number of guests in our house, all who are unfamiliar to one another, we expect that each guest would extend the simple courtesy of mutual respect, showing gratitude to the host. It is also in the sacred precinct. Even though pilgrims may not speak the same language of the tongue or speak the same language of a soul, they all pray together or offer a kind of gesture, a form of zakat to someone who may have been off. The pilgrim can practice self-restraint, a form of fasting with someone he may perceive as rude. The Hajj calls every believer to employ all of the principles in his daily life, knowing that this action pleases his Lord. Allah says in the Holy Quran, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other, not that you may despise each other. Verily, 
the most honored you, of you in the sight of Allah is he who is most righteous of you. And Allah has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all things. Holy Quran 46, 13. Allah reminds us that we are all from a single pair, a male Adam and a female Eve. It is he who caused us to be made into tribes and nations. As this ayat states, he made us this way because he wants us to know each other. We can find no greater expression of the manifestation of this ayat than during the season of Hajj. Allah informs humanity that the one most honored in his sight is the one who is most righteous. Righteousness is an act of the soul. <laughs>